Hi guys, today I'm back with another foundation review. As always, there will be timestamps down below for those of you who are gonna comment and say that I talk too much. If you wanna skip ahead to application before and after flash photo test, a uh, check-in midway through the day in some natural light or the end of the day results. As always, I will also have everything that I'm wearing listed down below along with other content for oily skin if you're looking for more foundations or if you're looking for things like skincare and whatnot. All of that will be listed down below. Today, we are gonna be reviewing a powder foundation from Makeup Forever. I actually reviewed the liquid version of this a little while back and absolutely love it. It is the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin. So this is the powder foundation version. I did not try the duo matte, I believe, and I think that's being discontinued, so I can't directly compare it, but I can tell you what I think of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my face. Let's get started. Quickly, before we get into application, I did just wanna say this foundation comes in 30 different shades, which I think is awesome. I think Makeup Forever always does a good job with their shade ranges, at least in my personal experience. It retails for $38 American, $50 Canadian, so we're definitely feeling the Canadian dollar on this one and you're getting 11 grams of product. Generally in a liquid foundation you're getting a full fluid ounce that's kind of what I gauge off of but with powder foundations it definitely can vary a lot powder foundation to powder foundation. Something like the Charlotte Tilbury, although that's not a powder foundation, their uh, Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder has only, I think, eight grams of product in there, while a MAC Studio Fix Fluid has the most powder of any powder out there, pretty much, and it's 15 grams. So in here, you're getting 11 grams, which is definitely, I, will, I would say, about above average or about average. So happy to see that in there. And in here you are actually getting uh, an applicator. So it comes with your powder on one side and applicator on the other. And it has two different sides, depending on if you're looking for something more light coverage or more full coverage. They also are doing some kind of construction somewhere in my building and I had to start filming because I'm getting microneedling done tomorrow and I'm about to leave the house so time is of the essence here so hopefully you can't hear it generally if not almost always whenever I'm watching YouTube and someone's like oh my god they're mowing the lawn I hope you can't hear it I've never heard it I feel like it's a myth but this I feel like you could potentially really hear so my apologies if you can uh, I have gone ahead and primed half my face and this is not a first impression I've worn this so I know exactly what I think about it but I want to show you it in action Today I'm going to be wearing Y415. I've gone a little bit back and forth on this because in the past, in previous Makeup Forever foundations, I've always worn Y415, but then when it came to the matte velvet skin liquid, I was wearing Y425. So I have both of them here, and when I had a little bit more color, and I definitely have more color than normal, I was wearing Y425, but I think if you're generally my match, I would give 415 a, uh, a gander kind of depends if you're on the lighter or darker side of uh, NC42. And I'm going to be skipping the concealer today so I can show you a little bit of a lighter shade in action. I'm just going to put this under my eyes. I'm heading out today. It's super hot. I don't want to have a bunch of makeup on my face, so it's a perfect day to put a powder foundation to the test. So this powder claims to be 12 hour wear, full coverage for just about all skin types as well on their website. And it, like I said, it does come with a sponge, but I'm actually going to use a brush. I just prefer a brush. I will say uh, of all the kind of included applicators in a makeup product. This is definitely one of the best, but I still prefer a brush. Luckily, the one I'm recommending is a cheap one. It is the e.l.f. powder brush. I also love the Real Techniques buffing brush. Uh, so that's what I'm going to use today. Just That's just my preference. I like the sponge, but I still feel like it's just as fast and almost easier to use a brush in my in my opinion. I think you can probably get a little bit fuller coverage with the sponge. Maybe I'll do that right at the end. Um, but I just find with the sponge, especially normally when I wear powder foundation, if I wanna wear a concealer, I'll put concealer first, powder that, then my powder foundation. And I found when I went to use the sponge, I just, with see how a brush I can just kinda uh-huh, uh-huh, and avoid my under eye. With the sponge, I felt like I got kind of harsh lines and couldn't fully mesh together my concealer and foundation, if that makes sense. Uh, I love powder foundations. I think they're super easy. I've seen great things about this one. You probably have too from dry skin people as well. So I can't totally speak to how a dry skin person is going to like this, but it doesn't feel super tight or matte or drying. So it could be something to consider if you do have a drier skin type. So this is just some really easy breezy layers that I've put here on my skin. Yeah, and the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin was like 
oh, I still love it so much. It's so good. I traveled with it. Uh, and like I've said before, if I travel with something, it's serious. It just was so long wearing, but still looked natural on the skin. It looked good day, night. Uh, it was buildable. I really, really loved that. So I had very high hopes for this. And if you saw on their, um, their Instagram, they had a video. This girl um, was just smoothing it on her face with the sponge and it looks like it really does smooth the skin. If you have issues with pores or something and you've kind of stayed away from powder products in the past, this could definitely be something to keep your eyes out for if you have more textured skin. I won't be using a setting spray today, but I always love using a setting spray after using a powder foundation to um, just kind of melt things together, but by no means do I find that this looks drying or anything like that. I'll use the sponge just here at the end, but it's just so simple. If you have, for example, like I have a little bit of scarring on my cheeks and whatnot, and you'll see like it kind of took a little bit of the color out of my face. I'm gonna be putting a bronzer on, um, and this could be a good sponge for touch up as well. But it feels like nothing on the skin, and I really feel like it makes my face look just super, super smooth, especially in photos. And like I said, I just wanna keep it easy today, so I'm gonna use the shade Y245 under my eyes. When it comes to under eye setting powders, this is not as bright as I would generally go for, but because there is so much pigment in here, I feel like it does a good job brightening and just adding a little bit of brightness to say for the third time to my under eye without adding concealer, because I wouldn't wanna bring that powder right up under my eye, that's just not my preference. But if you're ever looking for, because I find a lot of the time under eye powders can make my under eyes look kind of gray and weird, but if you're ever looking for something to set a concealer, consider powder foundations as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a flash photo to show you how it performs there. Put on, put, put, <laughs> put on the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. Okay, I was just going to take photos and I feel like I look kind of pale. I've gone so back and forth on which shade I am in this foundation. <laughs> So I'm just, oh, I'll breathe it in. I'm just putting on a little bit of 425. And this is kind of a, this is a blush brush, I think, from Moda. Okay, so I have the rest of my face on. I'm going to race to get through this because they keep drilling on and off, and I've just been sitting here waiting for it to stop, and now I'm still talking. But anyways, I think I've talked about this in a review before, but I feel like sometimes when I really like a foundation, when I come on here to review it, it's like something goes wrong and it gets stage fright because my face looked so pale, and now that I bronze and stuff, everything looked good, but I've been wearing Y425 nonstop for the past month, mostly to set foundations, but it didn't make my makeup look pale by any means and I've also worn it as a powder foundation but then I felt like it was getting a little bit dark so I started wearing Y415 but then today I was like it looks a little bit light so I'm honestly a little bit perplexed I'm sorry about that but I have used both the shades successfully I don't know what's going on today if I'm extra glowy and bronzy but anyways I really do love the finished look that being said in flash photo you can definitely see the color looks a little bit light on me as it definitely did look light uh, in my just regular lighting and Anyway, so that is to be kind of expected there, which really is surprising to me. And I don't want to, I don't want that to scare you off because like I said, I have been wearing this for a while. So I'm not really sure why today it is such an off day for this foundation. So anyways, I do really love the way things look here. I got a nice, like I would say medium coverage here. I didn't build it up to full, but it definitely is quite buildable if you're looking to get some good coverage, especially if you want to use that sponge, you'll get an even um, better coverage that way. But I just personally love that powder brush. So I love the way that everything looks. It feels so lightweight, super, super soft on the skin. And like I said, if you do have a drier skin type, this isn't going to feel tight or heavy or cakey on the skin. So I'm going to go ahead about my day. As always, everything that I'm wearing makeup wise will be listed down below and I will check back with you in some natural light to give you a, a better look of how the color is in a few hours. I'll see you then. Coming to you with my midday check-in. I think you can see things look really good. My day has fallen apart. I was supposed to go out and do a bunch of stuff. None of those things have happened. I was supposed to film, but they continued with the construction. I think it has stopped now. Um, but you can see the shade match is really, really good. Uh, I think that it still feels really comfortable. It doesn't feel oily. It doesn't feel like it's moved around. I definitely feel like if you did want to touch up, if you had a lot of oil, you could blot and then go back in with the powder. Or for me right now, I don't feel like I need to blot. So I could just go in 
with a little more powder if I wanted to add coverage. Great if you like wear to work during the day and kind of want to touch up in the evening going out after work or something like that. So I think the color looks really good. I haven't had any issues with oxidizing or getting too oily, moving around or anything like that. So uh, I will check back with you at the end of the evening to show you how it all looks. So it is now the end of the day and I absolutely love the way that this foundation looks. I absolutely recommend it. Albeit we were off to a bit of a weird start in the morning. Like I said, I've worn this foundation a bunch so I'm not really sure what was up. I don't know if it maybe oxidizes slightly but I never had that issue when I was using it uh, before. So. I would say if you can kind of test out the Y415 and Y425 if you tend to be my shade, because I was kind of mixing them together as well. But I think, I think you can kind of get away with either depending on how deep your skin tone is. You might want to go Y425 if you tend to be on a little bit of the deeper scale, but they're pretty similar in shade and both have a yellow undertone but not super yellow because I'm kind of like a golden peachy undertone and I don't find it to be too yellow and I think under my eyes too it still looks bright it's not like super full coverage I didn't pack on much product there I do however just want to powder my face with it I'll use the 415 I have a little bit of sheen but nothing crazy but I just want to show you what it looks like I don't need to blot in my opinion and I'm just gonna go back over and sort of freshen things up. But I really do love this powder foundation. And not to be surprised, I think I've said this before, but there was only one product that Makeup Forever has released that I didn't like, uh, and that was their Artist Lip Colors. They came out with like these kind of liquefied lipsticks in really bright colors, but that's neither here nor there. Otherwise, I think they do an incredible job with their products. So. I really love this. This is something I've been wearing quite a bit this summer and I will definitely continue to wear it. I really, really love it and, and I do like the sponge. I think if you have a combo, oily combo, uh, even a dry skin type, you could like this depending on how you prep your skin. You may want to add a little bit more moisturizer if you have a drier skin type and like a hydrating spray. If you have an oilier skin type, always reach for a setting spray in my opinion. Uh, that really helps to lock things in place. Not that you need it, um, but if you are like experiencing really hot and kind of humid days like we are here in Toronto, it always helps to lock things in place. But I do love the versatility of being able to have it um, buildable in terms of coverage and then also being able to touch up super easily is uh, very handy. So it's a very easy, quick, effective product, which I don't think we can ask for much more than that. So really, really happy with this. I absolutely give it my stamp of approval and I really, really enjoy it. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.